What's up blockheads? Today I'm going to be doing a test ride on the brand new 2019 Indian Scout Bobber. I've got an absolute ton of requests to test ride Indian motorcycles. So here we are up here at Standard Motorcycle Company. Big thanks to Jason Paul Michaels who's actually an ambassador for Indian. Let's get to the video, show you guys what this motorcycle is all about. The Indian Scout Bobber comes in starting at 11999 It has a couple different trim and color options, starting in Thunder Black, has Thunder Black with ABS, which is 12799 Thunder Black Smoke with ABS, which is 13299 and then White Smoke with ABS, and Bronze Smoke with ABS, also 13299 The Indian Scout Bobber has a 69 cubic inch engine, a six speed transmission, and reported to have 100 horsepower. That's 69 cubic inches. For those of you that are wondering what it converts to in CCs, it is 1,133 cc's. It has a wet multi-plate driven clutch. It is electronically fuel injected. The engine is liquid cooled, so it's a liquid cooled V-twin. The exhaust is a split exhaust with a crossover. Like I said, the horsepower is reported at 100 horsepower with 72 foot-pounds of peak torque at 6,000 RPM. Pretty high up there. Fuel capacity on the bike is 3.3 gallons. It has a 4.8 inch ground clearance, a 29 degree lean angle. The seat height of the bike is 25.6 inches. The weight of the bike with a full tank of fuel is 554 pounds. And the wheelbase is 61.5 inches. For braking, it has a single 298 millimeter rotor two piston caliper in the front and a single 298 millimeter rotor one piston caliper in the back. The front tires are 130-90-16s on a cast 16 inch by 3.5 inch wheel and the rear is a 150-80-16 on a 16 inch by 3.5 inch cast rear wheel. For the suspension you've got a front fork tube diameter of 41 millimeters, front suspension is a telescopic fork cartridge type, front travel is 4.7 inches, rear travel is 2 inches, and the rear suspension is dual shocks, dual coilovers on the back. A few of the other features are the factory warranty, which is two years and unlimited mileage. The gauge is a digital tachometer with odometer, trip meter, engine temp, and low fuel lamp. And for lighting, it has the headlight, tail slash brake light, turn signals, license plate light, speedometer, and indicator lights. I gotta tell you guys, I freaking absolutely love the aesthetic of this bike. The way it looks, awesome. The black and the brown looks really nice. Obviously, I like the shorter fender, you know, it being a bobber from the factory bobber. I mean, technically a bobber is basically doing away with anything that's not necessary on the bike, making it as minimal as possible. But you know, from a, from the factory, for the fact that they offer a bobber, that's pretty cool. I am going to do a walk around real quick just to kind of uh, touch on some things. So you do have a solo seat here. Uh, it's got the Indian Motorcycles logo embossed there. You've got uh, two to two exhaust, forward controls on it. You've got these uh, bar and mirrors, which actually go underneath, which is really cool. I like those a lot. You got a really beefy front tire, single front headlight, single disc front brake, obviously a single disc rear brake. You've got shocks on both sides. So suspension, which is adjustable via a spanner wrench there. Belt drive, left side. Key goes right here on the side between the jugs. Overall, man, it's a good looking bike. And I will tell you this, the first time I got on it, threw a leg over it, crazy lightweight. Sitting up, this thing is <laughs> just ridiculous lightweight. Really, really low seat height. Regarding ergonomics, I'm five foot ten inches tall, and this is what I look like sitting on the bike. My legs are really crazy bent. I mean, if you guys are, are shorter, then you should have no problem being able to sit on this bike. And it is actually pretty comfy. I mean, you're leaning more forward, you know, the forward controls. It doesn't make you feel cramped up at all, but we're gonna talk more about ergonomics as well whenever we get into the ride portion. All right, guys, so we're about to throw a leg over this, do a test ride, but uh, I need the key. There it is. Have fun, my dude. Appreciate it. All right, so key is in, bike is on, so we're basically gonna do that, here at Prime, and it's a one button start, uh, if I remember correctly. Yep, it's pressing starts. Let's go over controls and everything real quick before we get too far into it. Obviously, throttle on right, brake, on off starter at the bottom which is you press it once you let it go and it starts you've got your lights over here so high beam low beam indicator is right there you've got your signals so left turn signal right turn signal you press it and turn it off press and hold in for your hazards there 
Press again to turn it off. Down below you've got your horn. Beep. So going over indicators here, or the gauge basically, you've got miles per hour, which apparently this bike goes up to 200. <laughs> yeah, you've got speedometer, and then within that neutral light, ABS, so the bike does come with ABS. You've got your gas light, which looks like we're low on gas. Like I was saying earlier, you've got your left indicator, your right indicator, your uh, hazards. Looks like you've got a uh, caution light, you've got a check engine light, the high beam indicator, and then some kind of little S indicator as well. And then within this display, you've got your RPM, and then you've got your time below that, which we don't have set up. Looks like we do have some kind of selection switch here, which will probably change. Yep, there we go. So 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm assuming that's the engine temp. And then we've got uh, DC, so that's your voltage, your uh, voltmeter for your battery. 169 miles, which is uh, the odometer. Then you've got trip one and back to RPM. So I'm gonna leave it on RPM. This bike is crazy lightweight, guys. Super low to the ground. Nice. <laughs> That's got some pep to it. So just before we get too far into this, to go over a couple of the bikes that I've owned previously, uh, I currently own a 2017 Harley Davidson Dyna Lowrider S, which I'll show you guys right here. That's my bike. I also have a 2018 Honda Grom. So the, uh, the Lowrider S is a 110 cubic inch uh, which is about 1800 cc's. So I've also owned a couple sport bikes uh, Yamaha R6, which is a 600 cc super sport and a CBR 1000 double R, which is a Honda super sport and I've also owned a Harley-Davidson Iron 883 Sportster Which is the bike that a lot of people compare this bike to they basically say should I get a, a Sportster or should I get a Scout in terms of price range you can find Sportsters for pretty cheap with the Indians, uh, I haven't really looked too far into them, like in the used or aftermarket. In terms of ergonomics, as you guys just saw me uh, pulling away right there, you've got forward controls on this thing. I'm five foot ten inches tall, and this thing is pretty comfortable. Obviously, we're going to see because we're going to go on a bit of a longer trip over to Lake Apopka, but I can tell you right now, with the forwards, it feels pretty comfortable. It's got some pep to it too. That's nice. I remember the first time I rode an Indian Scout and I was really surprised by it. And I don't know why I was surprised because I didn't really have any previous like expectations or you know opinions about it. But it actually feels pretty nice. It does feel like I'm stretching a bit. And uh, whenever you're taking off like that, the seat eh, tend to slide off the back of the seat a little bit. Now it's not the most comfortable seat in the world it is a little uh, firm, but it's to be expected, man. It's a freaking bobber, right? And bobbers normally have like Springer seats on them, but this is it. Good. Yes, sir. Thanks, man. Blockhead. Good to meet you. Woo. <laughs> Standing up, back of calf, touching exhaust. Suspension, a little stiff, but I mean, what do you expect on? You know a bike like this it's not going to be like uh, some bagger suspension you know dude this bike is plenty peppy man gonna throw 93 dead dinosaurs in her gas her up before we go i gotta remember turn the key off so the battery doesn't die also i need the key for the gas open all right, 93 dead dinos. It's weird, it's really like shallow tank. You can't really put the nozzle in it too far. Kind of forces you to like, almost like hold it way out. It's interesting. There we go. Key is tiny. All right, so leading the pack, we've got Paul, link below. We've also got uh, Heather on the back. We've got Riding with Raj. So the blinkers do take some getting used to, especially coming from my Harley. I'm used to, uh, you know, having blinkers on each side. 
but the blinkers on this are pretty much like a, like a metric bike or a Honda or you know stuff like that single-sided so you've got basically a toggle left and right and then press in to turn off I'm kind of curious if they're self-canceling I don't think they are but we'll uh, we'll come across that in this test ride video braking feels nice man I can't get over how lightweight this bike is it's pretty crazy I know we haven't been that far but I can tell you right now the seat feels a little small feels like I'm hanging off of it a little bit but the comfort of the bike it's actually pretty comfortable shifting one of the things I always touch on shifting feels very prominent both on the upshift and the downshift there's a very positive click the reason I mention that is because if you guys have ever ridden a motorcycle with uh, a mushy shifter it doesn't give you a lot of confidence that you've actually shifted into the next gear right so you guys notice here if you can hear it I can't hear the click but you can really feel it in your foot which is nice so the uh, the ergonomics of the bike just sitting here riding at 50 miles an hour does it have a gear indicator pretty sure it does right yeah gear indicator right there so I'm in fourth we have six gears yep six gears all right we'll drop it into fifth but yeah in terms of the ergonomics I am kind of already starting to feel it in the back a little bit it, I mean this thing basically has you like leaned way forward kind of stretched out you know what's funny and a lot of you guys are gonna like probably get a <laughs> get riled up about this but the ergonomics on this feel very similar to the new Harley Davidson FXDR your feet are forward you know it's got the forward controls it kind of has you leaning more forward even though it doesn't have clip-ons as compared to the FXDR this bike man it feels just like it it's got you more stretched out and your legs forward like that it's got some nice power drop it a gear but yeah ergonomics it, it totally feels like you know muscle bike like the fxdr or the v-rod very similar the mirrors man i freaking love the mirrors they're like really nice and big like you can see really well with them adjust this the right one a little bit when we come to a stop here downshifting feels very nice at one point once it gets nice and warmed up we are going to get on it a little bit but yeah we're headed to uh we're headed to sugarloaf it's going over some of these road bumps and stuff the suspension does feel pretty stiff but that's uh that can be both a good thing and a bad thing obviously if you're doing distance um it might kind of take a toll on you but it does make it feel much more you know sporty and in tune with the road which is nice the weight of the bike and it being as lightweight as it is it makes it feel very flickable even though and i didn't expect that even though it has a bigger front tire i didn't expect it to feel as you know like you could toss it around like you can i know on like comparatively to a harley davidson 48 you know with a bigger front tire like that it doesn't feel like you can you know corner it as well or whatever or throw it around as easy but this doesn't really come across like that like it just it feels so lightweight i'm really liking these mirrors a lot being able to like look down i mean they're just so big it's really nice after you get used to the controls everything feels very intuitive the clutch feels pretty normal you know like pulling it in it's you know it, it engages in a you know pretty normal spot I know on some bikes it feels like way further out, but uh, yeah, this one feels feels pretty good. I like where the gauge is at, just because you know, like on some bikes, you know, especially like even my low rider S, like the gauge is on the tank. So basically, like here and here, I've got like RPMs and uh, like speedometer. Having the gauge right here is nice because it's like I don't have to like look down and look away from the road. I can just glance down and like I can still see it, you know, with my helmet, which my helmet is a uh, showy RFSR. And so like if I'm cruising here, you know, just like this, I know you guys can see it because of the wide angle of the GoPro, but I can, I can glance down and at the bottom of my visor, like I can still see, you know, the gauge, which is nice. I'm sure you guys have noticed, but I'm going to be comparing it to uh, like the feel of a Harley Davidson a lot because that's, you know, mainly what I ride. Like I said, I've, I own a, a Harley Davidson Lowrider S, which is a Dyna. And uh, I also had a Sportster for a while. Actually, I currently still own a Sportster, which I'm going to be building and giving away. If you guys want to join Patreon, shameless plug there, check it out. Patreon.com slash BlockheadMoto. I'm doing what we call the Blockhead Bike Build, 
where I take a motorcycle, I build it out, and then I'm gonna give it away, randomly select a uh, Block It patron and give it away too. I'd love to hear this bike with an exhaust on it, you know, like an aftermarket exhaust, something that's not so quiet. I'm sure they make plenty of stuff. In terms of aftermarket, I don't really know how much stuff is available for, you know, the Indian Scout. I'm sure there's probably a good amount of stuff. I know it's a pretty popular bike. Since I don't own one, don't have any experience, you know, building them out, I don't really know a ton about what is or isn't available. Yeah, I've seen, like, lots of people build these things out into just absolutely crazy stuff. I'll post some pictures right here of examples that people have built out the, uh, the Indian Scouts into. It's a pretty popular bike to build. And people do some awesome stuff with them for sure. Coming to a stop, that's where my feet sit. There and there. Not anywhere close to exhaust, that's good. But when you do stand up, <laughs> like you were standing up at a light or standing up at a stop or whatever, the back of my calf does tend to uh, touch this part of the exhaust, which looks like it is vented, it's interesting. I am feeling that I'm having to kind of pull myself up on the seat every now and then, you know, especially like after an acceleration. It doesn't really like, you know, lock you in or anything. I'm sure there's uh, aftermarket seats that you can get if you don't like this one, if you want to get something like more comfortable. You know, people do Springer seats on bobbers, so I really shouldn't be complaining about this one. <laughs> if you guys have ridden, you know, uh, a decent amount of bikes, there's kind of a different feeling that you get whenever you're sitting on the bike. So whenever you sit on the bike, so something like that, you know, uh, the Chieftain, it, it looks like Raj is sitting more like in the bike, you know, like it's kind of coming up around him and he's like more tucked in uh, on the back of the, the spine, like the frame. He kind of dips down and goes more into the bike. With this one, it feels like you're sitting kind of more on top of the back of the frame of the bike. And then whenever you're like going into corners, that's, that's good. If you guys have ever ridden a sport bike, sport bikes are very similar, especially like super sports like Yamaha R6 or CBR 1000 RR. Uh, it does make you feel like you're sitting more on top of it, but what that does is it gives you more confidence like in the turns because it feels like you can get down further. Now, one of the things that Jason did warn me about whenever, uh, you know, taking this bike was to be careful in the turns because he said it's similar to like a Harley 48, which if you guys know anything about that bike, it's not the best in turns. It's a little low. It doesn't have a, uh, a really far lean angle. Just, uh, yeah, I guess be careful in the turns. If you start hearing scraping, <laughs> ease up a bit. You do have the little things on the bottom of the pegs that'll give you a warning if you are starting to scrape. Yeah, same on each side. Ooh, look, see that one? Somebody scraped that one a bit, leaning left. So I would assume that that's the first thing to touch and not like your exhaust or something, but. Freaking stock exhaust is all breathy. This one sounds like air, just whoosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said that's my only complaint about these bikes. I'm assuming he was gonna say they're quiet as hell stock. But I mean, that's EPA regulation stuff, you know, it's like they have to uh, meet a certain decibel level and you know, they usually have to have like some kind of emissions level, so. Not bad, not bad. It feels smooth, man. It's that's one thing I will say is it feels very smooth. It feels like you can throw it very easily. I would totally ride one of these. Granted, I might change out the bars and the seat. I mean, the stance that it that it has is really nice. Obviously, you guys know, or if you don't know, I like my bikes to be low and sleek, and this totally fits that profile. <laughs> I mean, from the factory the mirrors come under the bars and I do that to pretty much all of my bikes you know especially like those mirrors that basically come out of these stems you know they come up and over give it like these big old ears I always take those off of the bike and I always like do bar ends or undermount them just because it gives the bike a nice profile so the fact that it comes with bar end mirrors that go underneath and that don't stick way out here that's nice I like that a lot Raj on the Chieftain Overall, I like it. Just to be totally open and honest, it takes a lot for me to dislike a bike. Like I said, if you look at the personal bikes that I ride, I own a 2017 Dyna Lowrider S Harley Davidson, which is a 110 cubic inch 
it's an absolute monster. It has torque for days. Like, it's, it's quick as hell, man. But then, on the opposite side, I also own the 2018 Honda Grom. That's a 125cc. That thing is not quick at all. It's very slow. It tops out at like, you know, 55, 60 miles an hour. But it's a totally different style of riding and it's a hell of a lot of fun. I'm basically just giving you guys my thoughts and impressions on the motorcycle. By no means is it meant to be like, you know, talking about things I hate and all that stuff because like I said, it takes a lot for me to dislike a motorcycle. I have fun on all of them. It's just part of, I don't know, my personality. I, I've got love for two wheels and a, that's a very broad range of two wheels. There's definitely lots that I like about the bike. Feels like it has some good power to it. It's very smooth, even when you're getting up on it. <laughs> feels like, I mean, when you're getting more on it like that, it feels like you're just hogging into the freaking ground, man. It's nice because you're so low, you know? Feels good. It nice. <laughs> you can kind of feel it pushing you back on the seat. Not bad. Overall thoughts, like I said, I like it a lot. Things I would change, uh, I mean, I don't think this is really meant as like a distance bike. You know, like I said, I can, uh, you're, you're more slouch forward. It does feel like you're in the positioning of like an FXDR or like a V-Rod, you know, with your, you're basically reaching more forward with both your, uh, your feet, since the forward controls and your arms and it has it basically like I'm hunched forward anyways so that's the review guys I hope y'all have enjoyed it big shout out to Standard Motorcycle Company and Jason Paul Michaels and uh, Paul for leading us here anyways you guys be sure to go give all them a follow I will drop links down in the description below if you did enjoy it hit the like button if you guys aren't subscribed already hit the subscribe button Hit that bell icon as well so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. If you guys have friends that are interested in the Indian Scout or uh, test ride videos like this, be sure to hit that share button also. That actually helps out the channel quite a bit. So if you guys are able to hit that share, it'd be greatly appreciated. Till next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. And I will catch y'all later. Is that the bike I hear? Sounds like a whirring sound. Maybe the fan's going or coolant or something. All right, deuces. Now this is a proper damn test ride. I want to be able to do this with all the bikes that I test ride. Yeah.